And more photos are coming in from last Sunday's landslide and tsunami in southeast Alaska. USGS says preliminary interpretation of photos show the landslide triggered tsunami went up the hillside at least 100 feet in Tracy Arm, south of Juneau. The wilderness of Alaska has always carried a sense of raw majesty and latent danger. A place where mountains, glaciers, and the sea constantly interact in ways that remind humanity of its fragile place in nature. In early August of that year, an event unfolded in the remote Tracy Arm Fjord that captured the attention of geologists, seismologists, and ordinary people around the world. A massive landslide, invisible to most as it happened, generated one of the most powerful tsunamis ever recorded on the North American continent. The scale of the wave defied belief. At its maximum, scientists estimate the wall of water surged upward to around 1,700 feet, or roughly 500 meters. In a place often visited by cruise ships, kayakers, and small fishing boats, this was nothing less than a brush with a silent catastrophe. Images released afterward by NASA, the United States Geological Survey, and the Alaska Earthquake Center showed the brutal power of the event in breathtaking clarity. The glacier that once sat proud within Tracy Arm had already retreated significantly in recent decades. On the steep mountainside above, a scar of newly exposed rock traced the origin of the collapse. A block of earth more than 1,000 meters long and 600 meters wide, stretching beyond 2,000 feet in length, had broken loose from an elevation near 1,000 meters above sea level. The mass cascaded downward, smashing onto both the ice of the glacier and the cold waters of the fjord. When the rock and earth slammed into the water, the displacement was catastrophic. The fjord's narrow walls amplified the energy, Trees were ripped away. Bedrock was scoured bare. What had been dense forests along the shoreline became naked slopes of stone. The vegetation simply erased. The wave that followed rose so high across the fjord that researchers compared it with the infamous landslide-induced mega-tsunami at Tan Fjord in October of 2015. That earlier disaster, which reached heights of more than 670 feet, had once been regarded as one of the largest tsunamis of modern record. Yet the wave at Tracy Arm nearly tripled that measurement. Had there been any ships nearby, whether luxury cruise liners carrying tourists, fishing vessels, or small kayaks exploring the wilderness, the outcome would have been unthinkable. The sheer height and speed of such a surge would have obliterated anything in its path. Remarkably, Almost miraculously, no one was in the immediate fjord when the collapse occurred. But the wave did not remain confined. Its energy carried outward, wrapping around corners and traveling down channels in ways that scientists later mapped with astonishment. As far away as Juneau, over 90 kilometers or 56 miles distant, the tsunami's effects were registered. It was not only instruments that bore witness to this. On a small place known as Harbor Island, three kayakers camping overnight felt its fury firsthand. In the darkness, one of the campers awoke to the sound of rushing water. A surge more than 15 feet, or about four and a half meters high, struck the shoreline where their tents were pitched. It stopped a mere two inches, or five centimeters, from flooding inside. Gear was washed away. One kayak was ripped from its place and hurled upward into the branches of a tree before being deposited there like a toy. The three scrambled to safety, unsure of what had triggered the sudden flood. For them, the realization came slowly. That faraway rumble of the mountainside collapsing into Tracy Arm had sent a pulse of destruction across the waterways, reaching even their isolated camp. Their survival owed itself not to foresight, but to fortune. They managed to call for assistance, and a nearby boat retrieved them before the situation worsened. The images taken three days after the event told a chilling story. The landslide not only pushed vast amounts of rock into the fjord, but also temporarily created new landforms, filling sections of the waterway with debris before the tide began reclaiming it. Water, ever persistent, clawed back at the rubble, washing it gradually out to sea. What had been a mountain face is now a yawning scar, its once stable slope peeled away in a smooth and unnervingly clean surface. From aerial views, the sharp contrast of bare rock against surrounding forest showed the violence of that sudden release. Scientists were both exhilarated and sobered by what their instruments had captured. 
seismographs scattered across the globe detected the tremor. Stations in New Mexico, Arizona, Pennsylvania, Norway, Kamchatka, Hawaii, Greenland, and Indiana all registered the shock. The vibrations had rippled across continents, so powerful that they stood out clearly against the background hum of Earth's normal seismic activity. Yet the most haunting data came when the seismic record was converted into sound. By shifting the frequency of the recorded vibrations into the audible range, researchers created a chilling audio track of the event. The hours leading up to the collapse sounded like faint rain, irregular pops reminiscent of corn kernels bursting. These were the small precursor quakes, the earth grumbling before failure. As time drew closer to the main collapse, the frequency of these sounds quickened, becoming an urgent buzzing. Then came the final roar, a deep, thunderous slam, like an enormous door being forced shut by an invisible hand. After that, relative silence returned, broken only by a few fading rumbles. For geologists and seismologists, this sonification was not merely data, but a way to feel the Earth's anguish, to sense the mountain's cry as it gave way. Comparisons with past landslides highlighted just how extraordinary the Tracy Arm event was. The Tan Fjord collapse of 2015 had sent nearly 180 million tons of rock and glacial sediment cascading into the sea, stripping 20 square kilometers, or nearly 8 square miles, of coastline bare. It had been hailed as the most powerful landslide in North America since the eruption of Mount St. Helens in 1980. The Tracy Arm landslide, however, surpassed it in both scale and consequence. Early estimates suggest that well over 100 million cubic meters of Earth had been displaced, though precise measurements remain difficult given the complexity of the terrain. The spectacle, though unseen at the moment it occurred, was a stark reminder of how vulnerable human presence is in these wild places. Tracy Arm, with its towering cliffs and glittering glaciers, is a prime destination for tourism. Cruise liners often maneuver delicately through its narrow waters to give passengers an awe-inspiring view of icebergs calving into the sea. Smaller vessels, from yachts to kayaks, regularly seek adventure among its dramatic scenery. That no one was present during this particular collapse seems nothing short of providence. And yet, the event is not without precedent. Alaska, shaped by glacial forces and ongoing tectonic shifts, has long been a landscape prone to instability. When glaciers retreat, they remove a weight that once pressed against valley walls. Without that stabilizing force, steep slopes can become precarious. Freeze-thaw cycles where water seeps into cracks, freezes, and expands, slowly pry apart rock faces until the inevitable collapse occurs. This interplay of geological forces sets the stage for landslides of unimaginable proportions. The survivors on Harbor Island, the kayakers who watched their belongings swept into the water, serve as living testimony to the reach of such events. For them, the tsunami was not an abstract graph or a photograph from space. It was a sudden rush of water that almost ended their lives. Their account, while perhaps overlooked amid the scientific reports, provides the human face of what could easily have become a disaster with a death toll. In the following weeks, satellite images compared the fjord before and after the event. The difference was shocking. Vast areas once green with spruce and hemlock stood barren. Vegetation that had taken centuries to establish vanished in seconds. Near-infrared imagery, which highlights the presence of plants, revealed stark swaths where life had been stripped away, leaving raw stone. Nowhere was this clearer than Sawyer Island. Once covered with dense trees, it had been raised so completely that only a single lone tree remained standing. A strange monument to resilience amid devastation. The raw force of the Tracy Arm landslide was not confined to what the eye could see in the fjord. Around the world, seismographic stations caught its signal as the vibrations pulsed through the planet. The Alaska Earthquake Center, working with agencies such as the United States Geological Survey and Earthscope Science, later released a detailed analysis of the seismic waves. Their chart showed how the event had been picked up thousands of kilometers away, from Kamchatka to Norway, from Greenland to the deserts of New Mexico. The lines on the graph were not just sterile traces of ink. They were the Earth's way of recording trauma, the echoes of a mountain tearing itself apart. What fascinated researchers was the clarity of the precursory events. Hours before the mountain gave way, small rumbles shook the slope. To a casual observer, nothing would have seemed unusual. No one standing at the base of the cliffs would have realized that deep fractures were widening, 
that the Earth was preparing to unleash a colossal slide. But the instruments caught it. Later, when the data was converted into audio, those warnings became audible as a series of crisp pops and crackles. It was as though the mountain was whispering its distress in a language only machines could hear. The actual collapse, when it came, was unmistakable. The spectrogram flared with energy, a vertical streak of brightness marking the instant of failure. The transformed sound was explosive, a resonant slam that shook listeners, even though they knew it was only a recording. For those who heard the sonified data, it was not difficult to imagine the mountain crumbling, rock and soil tumbling in a deafening roar, air displaced in violent gusts, and finally, the fjord itself rising against the impact like an angry beast. Comparisons to earlier disasters emphasized just how extraordinary this event was. A decade earlier, the Tan Fjord mega tsunami had stunned scientists when a massive section of mountain collapsed into the water, creating a wave that climbed more than 670 feet or 200 meters up the opposite slope. At the time, it had been considered one of the largest waves in modern memory. Entire swaths of coastal forest had been ripped away, leaving bare rock behind. For years afterward, the scar was visible from the air as a reminder of the fragility of Alaska's terrain. Yet Tracy Arms' event eclipsed that scale. At nearly 500 meters, the maximum run-up height ranked it among the most extreme waves ever recorded on Earth. The sheer volume of displaced material, likely more than 100 million cubic meters, made it larger than many volcanic landslides. In fact, geologists noted that it rivaled some of the great lahars associated with volcanic eruptions, when ash and mud cascade down slopes at terrifying speed. The imagery collected after the disaster became essential not only for scientific understanding, but also for public awareness. Photographs taken just before and just after the landslide painted a chilling picture of transformation. In shots captured three days before, the slope still appeared stable, green, and thick with vegetation. In those taken after, entire sections of the mountain were missing, a vast scar where earth had been sheared away. The fjord below, once a glittering blue channel of water, was littered with floating debris. The landslide had poured into the sea with such force that it temporarily pushed back the tide, creating new strips of land that were slowly eroded again as the water returned. Among the most striking images were those of Sawyer Island. Before the event, it had been thickly forested, a lush reminder of life's persistence in the cold north. Afterward, it was stripped bare. Only a single tree remained, standing against the emptiness, a lonely sentinel among stone and silence. For many, this site became symbolic of both nature's fragility and its stubborn resilience. Tourism companies operating in Alaska shuddered when they considered what might have happened had the collapse occurred at a different time. Just days earlier, a luxury yacht had been in nearly the same location where the rock slide thundered into the fjord. Photographs of the vessel anchored calmly against the glacier became chilling in retrospect. Six days separated that scene of serenity from what could have been its annihilation. For the passengers and crew who had stood on deck taking in the scenery, the difference between life and death was a matter of timing. Even more unsettling was the knowledge that no monitoring system had given advance warning. While seismographs around the world caught the collapse, they only did so after the event had already happened. It was a tour boat operator, not a scientific instrument, who first suspected that something unusual had occurred. The owner of the vessel radioed seismologists, prompting them to check their charts. What they found confirmed the suspicion. A colossal landslide had taken place in the fjord, unnoticed by the rest of the world until its echoes appeared on sensitive instruments. For the people of Alaska, this was not merely a curiosity. Communities like Whittier, built along marrow passages and steep slopes, live with the knowledge that landslides can occur without warning. Scientists have long worried about other unstable slopes, such as those near Barry Arm. If a mass of earth there were to fall all at once, 
it could unleash a wave large enough to devastate the town. Estimates suggest such a collapse might not produce a wall of water as tall as Tracy Arms, but even a wave 30 to 50 feet high, or 9 to 15 meters, would be disastrous in a populated harbor. Efforts have been made to install seismic instruments to monitor these zones, but as Tracy Arm demonstrated, monitoring cannot always prevent surprise. The Tracy Arm landslide also reignited discussions about climate change and its role in destabilizing mountain slopes. As glaciers retreat, they remove the immense weight of ice that once buttressed valley walls. The loss of that pressure can allow fractured rock to shift more easily. Warmer temperatures also increase the frequency of freeze-thaw cycles, where water seeps into cracks, freezes, and expands, gradually prying rock apart. Over years or decades, these subtle processes weaken entire cliffs until one day gravity takes over. Scientists believe that the retreat of the Sawyer Glacier may have played a crucial role in setting the stage for the collapse. For those who study Earth's dynamic systems, the event was both a tragedy narrowly avoided and a scientific treasure. The data gathered will fuel research for years to come, helping to refine models of landslide behavior, tsunami propagation, and seismic signatures. Yet for local residents and for travelers who frequent Alaska's fjords, the event is a sobering reminder that beauty and danger are inseparable in such landscapes. The grandeur that draws visitors from around the globe is the very product of forces that can destroy without warning. Weeks after the collapse, satellite surveys continued to capture the ongoing transformation of the landscape. The ocean slowly reclaimed its space, washing away loose debris and carrying sediments farther into the fjord. The new landforms created by the landslide began to erode, their brief existence a reminder that even dramatic changes can be temporary in the face of water's persistence. From above, the scars remain visible, etched into the mountainside like a wound that will take centuries to heal. The scar at Tracy Arm will remain long after memories of the event fade, a silent monument to the moment when a mountain collapsed and the sea rose in fury. For scientists, the data gathered will be studied and compared for decades. For local communities, the event serves as a warning that Alaska's fjords, as majestic as they appear, are also unstable landscapes, constantly reshaped by climate, ice, and gravity. And for those three kayakers whose tent nearly vanished under a midnight surge, it is the story of survival that underscores how thin the line between life and disaster can be. Nature's power is often celebrated for its beauty, but in moments like this, it commands respect in its most humbling form. A wave taller than the Empire State Building crashed against the slopes of an isolated fjord, erasing forests, scattering debris, and sending shockwaves through the Earth itself. It is a reminder that even in an age of satellites and global monitoring networks, the planet can still surprise humanity with sudden, overwhelming displays of force. The Tracy Arm landslide and mega tsunami will be remembered not only as a scientific event, but as a warning, written in stone and water. Where glaciers retreat, where slopes crack, and where pressure builds unseen, the possibility of another collapse is always present. It may come tomorrow, or it may wait for decades, but eventually the cycle will repeat. For now, the lesson is clear. The wilderness that draws visitors from around the globe is breathtaking, but it is also alive with hidden risks. Those who venture into these places must carry not only awe, but also vigilance. The story of Tracy Arm is not merely about rock and water. It is about how fragile human presence is in the face of Earth's restless power. If this story moved you, if it left you with both wonder and respect for nature's might, then take a moment to support this work. Like this video, share it with those who need to understand how extraordinary and dangerous our planet can be, and subscribe for more stories that reveal the hidden forces shaping our world. Together, we can explore, learn, and prepare for what nature may bring next.